Today we're going to talk about template literals, which are also sometimes called template strings, an old name that is now deprecated. We've used these a few times already in some previous tutorials, and you probably have an idea for how they work, but let's go through the specifics. Template literals behave a lot like typical JavaScript strings, in that they contain chunks of text. However, they offer a few distinct advantages over traditional strings. The most obvious is that they make concatenation both slightly shorter and significantly easier on the eyes. Let's say we have these variables. With the ES5, we need to do something like this to create a short sentence. Save that and refresh. Black Panther's name is T'Challa, he lives in Wakanda where he is a king, and he has one siblings. That's fine. It's not impossible to figure out what's going on there or anything, but if you're like me, with longer string concatenation, there's roughly a 100% chance you'll miss a space or something on your first attempt, end up with a sentence that starts like, Black Panther's name is T'Challa, and have to go back and fix it. Here's the ES2015 version. Save that, reload, you'll see we get the same exact output. That code is shorter by 21 characters, which is nice enough, but it's also infinitely more readable. Those dollar signed variables are called placeholders and get filled in by the JS engine at runtime with the appropriate variables. Now, perhaps you're annoyed by that code outputting one siblings instead of the correct one sibling. Of course, we don't want to just knock off the S, because what if he finds out he has a long-lost brother, which is the exact kind of thing that probably has actually happened in the comics at some point. Well, good news, everyone! Template literals are awesome because placeholders aren't limited to containing simple data. You can perform actual code in them. Observe. Save that. And refresh. And there we go. But if we change this number to 2, and refresh, we get the correct plural. Change that back to 1 for now. So in this new code, the first placeholder just outputs the value of num siblings, but the second placeholder uses a ternary operator to evaluate num siblings and respond with a particular string based on whether the number equals 1 or not. You can also nest these things, which can get a little complex. Here's an alternate version of the code above. Oh, and while I'm at it, let's fix the spelling mistake here. Black Panther is an entirely different superhero. Save that. Reload. And there you go. Identical output. In this case, nesting is longer than not nesting, and it's also a little confusing. But there are times when it can either shorten code or make it easier for human eyes to parse. One final thing to mention. Template literals can contain line breaks, but they will parse those line breaks. So this code... will log the following. Save. Refresh. Black Panther's name is T'Challa, he lives in Wakanda. See how it also keeps all your spacing? That can be good or bad, depending on what you're trying to do. Personally, I don't find multi-line template literals to be super useful, but I'm sure there are situations where it makes sense. There's more to template literals, specifically something called tagged functions, but those are complex and would take longer to explain than we have available today. So we'll have to get to them in a future tutorial. As always, you can download example files for each of these tutorials from the JS Quick Hits GitHub repo, which is linked in the description. See you next week!